We are back with the GOP's big push on tax cuts. President Trump and House Republicans launched their bill this week, a 400-page rewrite of the tax code, centers on a permanent cut in the corporate tax rate, plus new cuts and credits for individuals and families. That will increase the deficit by at least $1.5 trillion over 10 years and should cut income taxes for most Americans. But the bill eliminates many popular deductions, and five years out, many middle-class families will actually see their taxes go up as credits expire. Most of the benefits will go to the wealthiest Americans, but the bill supporters argue that economic growth sparked by the tax cuts will be a big boon to every American. The big question now, can the GOP hang together to pass the bill by Christmas? And we're joined now by two House Republicans with different views of the plan. House Freedom Caucus Chair Mark Meadows of North Carolina, Congressman Peter King of New York. And Congressman King, let me begin with you. You've been an outspoken critic of the, the bills uh, doing away with the tax deduction for state and local income taxes. Does that mean you're a no vote? As of now, I would have to. You know, let me make it clear. I'm a Ronald Reagan, Jack Kemp Republican when it comes to tax cuts. I believe in tax cuts. I believe they worked under John Kennedy. They worked under Ronald Reagan. But this particular tax bill, by taking away the state and local uh, tax uh, deduction, has a particularly devastating effect on New York and New Jersey. We already get treated unfairly. Uh, New York gets back only 79 cents on the dollar that's sent to Washington. $48 billion deficit we have as part of money that we send to Washington that we don't get back. And since 1913, it's been a principle not to have a tax on a tax. Now, we had one other policy uh, suggestion here. The Republican Party has always stood for federalism, encouraging local and state governments to do all that they can, as opposed to the federal government. Well, now we're being penalized for that. So, no, it's wrong, and uh, it would have a, a, an extremely damaging effect on my constituents, who are middle, uh, in some cases upper middle, but mostly middle income. It's a district that went for Barack Obama by four points and five points. Ronald Reagan, uh, excuse me, Donald Trump carried it by nine. That's a 14 point turnaround. And the main objection I'm getting in my district are from Trump voters. So that's one no vote right there. Congressman Meadows, let me bring it to you. You know, you've been a long not spoken. You and fellow Freedom Caucus members have been deficit hawks, but this bill's going to increase the deficit by at least $1.5 trillion. A lot of independent analysts say it could be far more than that. So can you vote for this bill? Well, we can. I, I can tell you right now, it's a work in progress. Obviously, Peter King is advocating real uh, hard on behalf of his constituents, and I appreciate that. Peter and I actually were on the House floor just the other day, right. and uh, as we were talking about what it does for his constituents, what it does for mine, uh, I can tell you on the, on the deficit side of things, even though we're looking at a $1.5 trillion increase in that deficit in the short run, uh, the pre preliminary numbers really look very good in terms of economic growth. So over a, a longer period of time, some 10 to 15 years, we believe that the economic growth will outweigh any short-term deficit increase that we see. And so uh, Peter and I are going to have to continue to work together to hopefully get this right. We're going to start the markup on Monday uh, in the House. Uh, the Senate will be rolling out their bill in the, in the next few days. But at the end of the day, uh, we, you know, failure is not an option. So you're willing to vote to increase the deficit over 10 years? I, I am. I mean, we've looked at this. Uh, of course, I'm a numbers guy, George, and as I've looked at this particular bill, uh, it, it appears that we should be able to get hopefully a 3.5 to 3.6 uh, GDP uh, uh, growth bump. Uh, when we do that, uh, that actually means higher wages, you know, a, a stronger economy. And as you look at a longer budget window, what it does is even though we're looking at increasing the deficit in the short run, uh, over a 15-year period, it appears that we could actually have these tax cuts paid for because of the economic growth. Congressman King, President Trump added a wrinkle when he said Congress should consider repealing the Obamacare mandate to buy health insurance in this bill. Can you go along with that? No, I, I think we should confine this to tax cuts and uh, tax reform. I agree with Mark. I hope we can find a way to work this out. But again, right now, it would be, as I look at it from my district and from my state, that you would have uh, my voters, my constituents, subsidizing other states in the country. And as it is, New York does subsidize the rest of the country already. So I just want to find a way to work this right now. Again, if it's worked out, I, I, want, I, I support almost everything else that's in the bill. I, I agree with Mark. I think it is going to bring about growth for the country. I just don't want the rest of the country to be growing and more and more people either have to move out of New York or have to lose their homes. Congressman Meadows, one other issue that's come up, the Joint Committee on Taxation from the Congress has said that uh, when these tax credits expire, which is five years from now, 2023, there's actually going to be, on average, a tax increase for families earning twenty to $40,000 a year and for families earning two hundred to 500000 Can you go along with that? 
you know, here, here's where we are, and it's interesting, Peter was talking about that individual mandate. One of the things that I've been advocating for is actually to include a repeal of the individual mandate in this tax bill. The reason for that, it gives us probably close to $400 billion more to not only extend those tax credits that you're talking about, George, but also to hopefully adjust and uh, be able to adjust that state and local tax issue that Peter is uh, seeing and Lee Zeldin and others in New Jersey are, are seeing. Uh, and so, so we're advocating on behalf of that. But, but really, when you look at those tax credits it, it's expiring, uh, I, th I think most of what we're seeing is, is as we start to reconcile with the Senate, uh, they will be permanent tax decreases for not only middle income uh, Americans, but across the spectrum that will be permanent for a 10 year period. Uh, and so, uh, looking at the detailed numbers, I think that the analysis that perhaps some uh, naysayers have right now. Uh, is, is not going to be meted out in, in the coming days. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we vote on this by November 16th in the House and certainly uh, by the first part of December in the Senate. Sounds like you guys have a lot to work through this week. Thanks very much for your time.